What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. So, I just watched HBO Boxing. Uh, I missed the first undercard. I seen a little bit of the end, um, the Willie Nelson one. I don't even want to talk about those. They're, they weren't really worth mentioning. Willie Nelson was getting shook. He's supposed to be the next, um, the truth. So, I do want to talk about Triple G versus Matthew Macklin. Short fight, short night for Gennady Golovkin. Spent six to eight weeks training or whatnot. And he made a short knot. He knocked out Macklin with a vicious left hook body shot in the third round. Um, all I can say is this dude has freakish power. This dude hits like a freight train. There's no denying it. Um, I even said in my prediction video, I thought he would get out, get Macklin, because Macklin is a, a tough Irishman. And, you know, just um, the Irish fighters and the fight mentality a lot of Irish fighters, they don't just lie down. You got to actually bludgeon them or really stop them. And that's exactly what Triple G did in this fight. Uh, he paralyzed him with a body shot that he was not able to recover from in the third round. Um, another indication that Triple G has crazy power is he looked very calm. And the whole time, even in the first round, he's hitting Macklin with anything he was hitting him with, it looked like it had some level of effect on him. Like it's snapping his head back. Um, Macklin looked very, very jittery, very frantic when he was getting hit. Like he was trying to keep um, keep Triple G off of him. And he, was, he used a lot of energy and a lot of movement trying to avoid. Um, and you could see a clear, concise, clear-cut difference in between both fighters' approach. Triple G, again, he was very composed which is definitely good um i hate when i see a power puncher that looks frantic to land a desperate shot triple g looked very comfortable while macklin looked like he was kind of erratic jittery sometimes if you ever watch shane mosley fights when he's uh feels he's down on the scorecards he looks really jittery um macklin looked like he was bothered by every time triple g touched him even in the corners it was the same tune uh, Macklin's corners, they were, they seemed more concerned, like, hey, you got to do this and this, and Abel Sanchez and Triple G's corner was like, go out there, do what you, you're doing and have fun, very calm, very relaxed, because they knew they were winning, and again, this was supposed to be Triple G's toughest chest, toughest test in the pro fight game, um, this guy has a crazy amateur background, and so far, so good, as far as the professionals, he has an exciting style, Makes people want to watch. He's obviously a knockout artist. Um, I don't think he's indestructible. I've said this time and time again. However, he's hard to beat. If he has a chin, he's going to be an enormous problem for anybody because um, they're going to have to have a chin themselves and they're going to have to have a really strong game plan. Anytime someone has power like that... Um, it just could be a nightmare, and again, you have to have a chin, you have to be a tough, very durable fighter, and very smart in there, you don't want to do anything, um, you don't want to reach with your punches, you don't want to leave if you throw a jab, you don't want to leave it out there too long so you get something on the way back, get countered with something, I mean, again, this guy's hitting like a ton of bricks, every time he's hitting people, it looks like it's hurting them desperately, um, there was a moment, I think in the first round, Macklin looked like he was uh, falling back into the ropes, and he, he kind of used the ropes to, to hold him up a little bit. It didn't count as a knockdown or anything. And again, to see someone at 160 just hit him with the body shot, it, I mean, it's eerie. I think so far in recent memory, there's a lot of people that obviously get compared to Tyson. Um, Gamboa has been one of those. They call him Baby Tyson. Just a, a slew of other people. I think Triple G is the closest to Mike Tyson. Um the way they vary is obviously Tyson fights at a higher weight division. I think Tyson had far better head movement and he was faster. But again, Triple G has that punishing power. It it really has some force and weight behind it and it clearly shows. One thing I definitely got to say is I'm really impressed, not with Macklin. I mean, I am impressed with Macklin, but this fight makes me impressed for Gabriel Rosado. That's a tough Philly son of a bitch because... Gabe Rosado went longer than Gennady Golovkin's last two opponents who are actually have been fighting at that weight division. Gabriel Rosado moved up to fight Gennady Golovkin 
and he lasted to the fifth round, and he didn't get, he got TKO'd because he was bleeding bad and he was taking punishment, whereas Macklin got dropped and couldn't get up in the 10 count. Uh, Ashida got knocked the fuck out, so um, it really makes me uh, respect Gabriel Rosado for, he didn't get, he didn't just get walked through, he made it probably Gennady Golovkin's toughest fight out of um, Pro Proxka or whatever, um, Ashida, Macklin, I think Gabriel Rosado was his toughest fight, so props to Gabe Rosado for that, um, tough kid, Gennady Golovkin, he, he also reminds me of Tyson in the sense that Mike Tyson would beat your ass and punish you and be, be very humble after the fact, like Mike Tyson would kiss his opponents or help them up, uh, Triple G seems like a very just humble guy. He's like, no, no, Max, I know, but he's a good boy. I, I know. I thank HBO and no, I know. <laughs> he just seems real chill, real humble, and um, just to, even his sportsmanship. If you watch Triple G, uh, they showed it in slow motion the body shot that dropped Macklin. It looked like he had the opportunity to hit Macklin with another shot as Macklin's going down. But he refrained from that. So that's good sportsmanship. I mean, you already got the guy, like, um, in pain. And he's probably not going to get up. So you don't have to kill him in the ring. You know what I mean? Hit him on the way down. Um, so he shows some restraint. Even, I think, earlier in the fight, the bell rang or something. And Triple G just let off the gas, even though he was he was in the process of throwing some punches. So Triple G, uh, again, he's, he's a fighter to watch. I'm really looking forward to it. I've said this before, there was a point in time where I hadn't seen as much Triple G. Um, I've seen him in the amateurs, and that's a different ball game. And the way, basically, the way Sergio Martinez has been looking and the way Triple G, I have no choice but to say that Triple G will end Sergio Martinez or send him to retirement. I mean, it's it's a tough fight. Um, obviously, it would be the biggest fight of Triple G's professional career. I'm far from a bandwagon fan. I don't just jump on someone's bandwagon, but this guy has freakish power. And again, Sergio Martinez is not a big middleweight, so him fighting a guy like Triple G with punishing power, he's, I mean, Martinez has got dropped by Barker, he's got dropped by Macklin, he got dropped by um, Chavez Jr., and he almost wasn't able to recover. I just really don't see him at this age, especially coming off injuries. He doesn't look like he's moving as fluid as he once did, like circa Kelly Pav Pavlik days. Um, I just don't see it. Kelly Pavlik dropped him. Kelly Pavlik is a good boxer with power, but the tools that I've seen Triple G use seem to be um, better. It looks like he has better speed, definitely better footwork than Kelly Pavlik. And he mixes up his punches. He, he's not as slow as Kelly Pavlik to me. And this is not to diss Kelly Pavlik because I like him too. But um, Triple G seems like he has more boxing ability. Again, his biggest thing, I don't really see much head movement. But when you got that type of power, maybe he feels he can just walk his opponents down, stalk him, and he doesn't need head movement. I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to make excuses for the guys. But there are some things that he's doing well. I mean, the power is clearly there. Um, his jab looks like it's a very strong jab. And he's not head hunting. He's throwing shots to the head, but he also goes to the body. He landed some beautiful, beautiful body shots, some beautiful body work against Macklin. Again, this is a tough Irish fighter who has great experience. He's been in there with the Sergio Martinez. Macklin is coming off a one first round KO against Alcine. Um, Macklin gave Sergio Martinez hell. Macklin should have beat Felix Sturm. I mean... This guy has experience, and he has some punching power as well, and it didn't look like it tonight. So Triple G, it looks like he's the truth. So far, so good. Um, obviously, an entertaining style. Um, I did a video saying pe fighters to watch for in 2013, and it looks like I was right with this one, Triple G. He looks like the the... He looks like he will be reigning for quite some time. I really want to see him and Peter Quillen. I almost want to see him and Peter Quillen more than I want to see Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez has losses. Uh, Peter Quillen and Triple G are both younger. They both have power. They both have momentum, and they're both undefeated. 
Sergio Martinez, I just think his um, legacy, I don't think he's... Peter Quill is a big, big boy. Like, I would say he's probably even bigger than Gennady Golovkin in terms of actual size, fight night weigh-ins, um, and he has punching power. So I would rather see Peter Quillen versus Gennady Golovkin over Sergio Martinez. Um, I think Sergio Martinez or Peter Quillen would be the best fight for Triple G at this point. I don't really see Gil beating him or if Barker beats Gale. I don't see either of those fighters really beating Triple G. Let me know what you guys think of Triple G. Do you like him? Do you hate him? Let me know something. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off. I see this being a good competitive fight. Um, I do have Gennady Golovkin winning. I think overall, I think he's going to overwhelm Matthew Macklin, but I really see him getting stopped probably rounds four or five.